Hi Floss Tube, I'm Teresa and welcome to Creative Whims. Why floss tube? <laughs> That's a really good question. I was approached, I'm not even sure how long ago, uh, somebody had mentioned to me about floss tube and I had never heard of such a thing. I didn't know what it was about and they explained it to me a little bit. I think I was at a show or something. And, and by the time the show was over and I got home, I, to be honest, had kind of forgotten about it. And then a friend of mine, uh, we, we were at a show together and she had mentioned it too. And she said, oh, you know, someone mentioned you and your patterns on floss tube. And I'm thinking, you know, ding, ding, ding. I've heard of floss tube before, but I still haven't checked it out. And then just very recently, somebody mentioned floss tube and said, you really should start a channel. It'd be a great way to connect with stitchers and people that like your work. So I thought, you know, I really need to check out floss tube. So I've kind of been binge watching floss tube, like I'll have it playing while I'm, you know, designing or doing some punch needle or even when I'm painting, I've been, I've been listening to floss tube and I am just overwhelmed by how much I'm learning about cross stitch. How can I do floss tube when, okay, here it comes. I don't cross stitch. I don't, you guys, I design punch needle and I design cross stitch but I I do all my own punch needle and I design the cross stitch and then I have amazing wonderful the sweetest ladies and now a gentleman uh, making my cross stitch models for me so that when I take I go to market uh, you know and, and also I have to have the finished piece to create the pattern and the chart so um yeah, so I thought, how can I do floss tube when I'm not a stitcher? So I, you know, really have been giving it a lot of thought over the past couple of weeks and uh, decided that I would treat it like, kind of like a newsletter, so to speak. I'm gonna, I plan on doing it every week and just basically creative whim studio what's going on in the studio you know what what are you know what I'm painting what I'm working on uh, I don't know if I should be showing what I'm designing for the upcoming uh, Nashville market which is not until March I know that sounds really far away but it for people for designers <laughs> that are getting ready for it no it's like it's you're working on it now but uh, you know so I don't know how much I'm gonna show uh, what I will do is after market I will show everything uh, of course, I will show everything aftermarket, but I might give some sneak peeks, peeks of some things here and there. But so that's why I decided to do uh, floss tube. Another reason I decided to floss tube is I have a little bit more time on my hands now. I know that that seems impossible, really, when I think about that. But the reason I say that is because I, for the past I think two years, I'm not even sure how long I've been doing it, but I. I had this uh, membership program at my Gathered Dream Create 8, you know, where I teach my e-courses and my tutorials are on the Kajabi platform and it's called Gather Dream Create and it's a place to go and learn how to paint. I do have a punch needle a tutorial on there which I'm going to revamp completely because it's very old, but I like my hair in that video. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I was doing a membership program called Coquit Studio Uncut, and it was weekly painting lessons. And it required a lot, a lot, a lot of my time. And I thought, you know, I, well, let me back up. So it was weekly, and then I, I, after doing that for over a year, I just was burnt out, you know, to, to figure out a painting that I can do in a reasonable amount of time that and, and do, I did, I did watercolor and I did acrylic and I did, uh, whimsical things. I did folk art. I did my angels. Like I had all these different things going on and it's because I wanted a wide variety to appeal to, you know, many different people in different styles. Well, I ended up 
backing that down to having bi-weekly lessons, which still, for $11.99 a month, you would get two painting lessons a month. So that was still really a great deal. But it still was intense. And I live out in the boondocks. I live in Michigan. I really don't live, I don't think, out in the boondocks. It's not like farm country, but I don't have cable hookup. I have... Uh, it's not dial-up, it's not that bad, but it's DSL. So it's through the phone lines and it takes forever to upload my videos. And my my videos for my lessons were, you know, two, sometimes three hours long and I had to inter upload them in, in half hour intervals. It was just, it's crazy. So I, I'm not doing COVID Studio Uncut anymore. I'm actually working on the last lesson right now and I'm not doing Koga Studio Uncut anymore, so I thought all this time I'm gonna have that I used to spend on that, I can do that, put that towards Floss Tube. Also, the people that were the members, the, we called them the Uncutters. The amazing Uncutters that were part of the membership program for Koga Studio Uncut, their comments were always, oh my gosh, I love listening to you, because when I would paint, I would talk. And I would tell them what's going on in my life. I would tell them what's, I mean, they had some really personal inside, you know, look at my life and my work. I would tell them about adventures in my business. And they probably know more about me than my friends know as far as my everyday, you know, or weekly what's going on in my life. Because I, you know, as I'm painting, I would just talk as if the person was in the room with me, as if each individual member of Kogut Studio Uncut was in the studio with me. And that was what they loved most about being a member. So I thought, well, that's another way for me to stay connected with those people because I'm hoping that they'll join, subscribe to my channel and um, get the weekly updates. And I plan on not editing this very often. <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be times I have to edit, but that was the beautiful thing. I called it Kogut Studio Uncut because it was uncut, it was unscripted. I did not, cut and paste and delete things out and edit my videos. It was just raw video. And I, I, the only time I did have to, I did have to bleep out a little section because my husband came in when I was recording and I thought, you know, I'm just gonna go with it. It's supposed to be raw video, right? And, and so I let him just be himself. And of course he said something inappropriate. So I had to, you know, just like take a little section out. That was the only time I actually added one of the videos. So anyway, now I have a little sign that when I'm filming in the studio, I, on the other side of my door, it says filming. So if he does come in, at least he knows to like, hey, you know, be cool. So anyway, that's that's my story. That's uh, why I decided to go ahead and do floss tube. Thank you for the encouragement, Bobby. I appreciate that. Um, and, and other people, I, cause I mentioned it on my Facebook page, my business Facebook page, uh, and people were like, uh, just s saying I should do it or, um, offering suggestions or offering for me to contact them if they need, have any questions. So I thought that was very generous. So I appreciate that. So let me just one more thing before I move on to some juicier things. Uh, the way I'm going to run mine will be different than probably most floss tube videos because like I said I don't cross stitch so I'm not going to be like sh doing a lot of showing finishes and things like that. I'm going to do the first part of my video about my needle arts business so it'll be about cross stitch and punch needle and what's going on in that part of my business and then so that'll probably go you know 15 minutes and then the next 15 minutes will be about my art and my licensing business, you know, what products are coming out uh, in the stores for my licensing business, and then what's, what products I've created for um, my Creative Whim store, and you know, what paintings I'm working on, and showing my works in progress, my whips that way. So there you go, that's, that's how I'm gonna run it. And that way, you know, if you're here just for floss tube, when I start talking about my art, you know, like, I don't care about that, you can stop the video. So anyway, welcome. <laughs> this is what it's gonna be like. Maybe a little flighty, but a little bit about m my business and how I got started and what I do. Uh, I had a, a normal job, I guess you could say. In 1992, I quit that job because I wanted, my husband and I wanted to start a family and I wanted to be home. So we had our first boy in 1993 and 1994, 
I started my business, Primitive Folk. Our business, I should say, Primitive Folk. It started out being my business, but he ended up uh, quitting. He's a sheet metal journeyman, and he quit his job to help me run the business because I couldn't do it myself anymore, by myself especially, because we had a young one. So that uh, was in 1994, we started Primitive Folk. Uh, 1996 was when I started licensing. And um, we, we at one point had a 900 square foot home with one bathroom and we had six employees. The entire basement was where we, because it was framed, it was, we were framing my art and it was, you know, little five by seven, five by fives, eight by 10, limited editions. Some of them were um, prints of very folk art looking uh, watercolor paintings. So our house was over t just, just filled to the brim with work and people. And I mean, it was it two dogs. It was crazy. So our, like our bedroom was the office and we'd had a fax machine in there. I mean, in the middle of the night, we'd get an order and, and the fax machine would go off and it was insane. And when, when I got pregnant for Ryan, that's when I said, we can't do that. I can't have a newborn in this house with all these folks. And so anyway, we ended up leasing a place. And, um, so that's how that went. But, uh, so then in 19 or in 2004, I was at quilt market cause I used to license my art with South Sea Imports and P and then I went to P and B fabrics and I went to Marcus fabrics and anywho, I was at quilt market. And I discovered punch needle. I came up on a booth and there was punch needle and I was just like, these look like little hooked rugs. These are the coolest thing ever. And it was Barb from Hooked on Rugs who isn't with us anymore, which is so sad. She's so talented and she was so friendly and she showed, you know, she was doing a demo in her booth and I was just like, oh, I gotta do this. When I get home, I'm gonna learn how to do this. And that's exactly what I did. So I just started making them and I didn't really plan on selling them or anything. I just wanted to make them and I was making them and I'm showing my friends and my family and everyone's like, Oh my gosh, I love these. I want to do it too. And you know, you should design patterns. Well, that's all I have to hear is like, you should design patterns and boom, I'm like all over it. So that was in 2004 and then 2005 is when I started selling punch needle patterns wholesale. So I was selling punch needle patterns and I was doing, I was doing well with it. Then I went to, and I was doing the TNA, TNNA shows, the National Needle Arts Association shows. But you know, there, there was knitting, there, there was so many different needle arts at these shows that, you know, punch needle was like this big and the show was this big, but I did the Nashville sh market and it was like, I quit doing the, well, actually, no, that was a TNNA show. My bad. That was a TNNA show. It's not anymore because they were going to quit doing that show. Like I had only been doing the Nashville market, I think two years and my business was growing and growing and I was like so excited. And all of a sudden, um, the National Needle Arts Association decided they weren't going to do that show anymore. And I was just like, what? And everybody, all the vendors, all the designers and folks at that show were just like, what? You know? So anyway, thank God, Needlework Retailer and the Yarn Tree, they took over the show and we didn't skip a beat. We just, they had it ready for the very next year, which was awesome. And they do a beautiful job running that show. So anyway, <laughs> I'm just getting off on a tangent and then I was going to set my timer too, to make sure I didn't talk too long and I forgot to do that. Anyway, uh, I was doing the show for, I don't know, probably three years and some of the store owners, you know, they would just peek inside and see it was punch needle and say, oh, you know, we don't do, I could hear them, you know, cause I'm right there and they're, oh, well, we don't do punch needle. And they would just walk right by and wouldn't even come in the booth. But I mean, I guess if you don't, you know, they only have a limited amount of time that they can shop there. So I get it. You know, if you don't carry punch needle, why would you come in and look around? So that happened for one or two years and then like people started actually coming in and looking and going, you know, we really love your, your work and your art, but we don't sell punch needle. You really need to do cross stitch. 
okay, well, I didn't do it right away. And then the next year was the same thing I got. Oh my gosh, you really need to do these in cross stitch. So I'm like, okay. So I learned how to do, okay, well, I had two people, and honestly, I cannot think of their names right now. I had two people help me get started in cross stitch because I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know how to cross stitch. I don't have time to learn how to cross stitch. It seemed like an impossible task, but I talked to a couple other designers and I can picture their faces. I can picture their booth. I can't picture, I, I can't think of their names, but I will get their names because I want to give them a big thank you, a big shout out for being so generous and helping me get started. But uh, one of the ladies told me about the designer, you know, the, or the cross stitch program I needed for my computer, and she was very encouraging. And then the other lady told me about, you know, because I told her I said I don't cross stitch and I don't have time to cross stitch. And she said, well, I have model stitchers, and so she told me how to find model stitchers. And anyways, they were very helpful in getting me started. So then the next, the following market, I came out with I think four, three or four cross stitch patterns or charts and they they went well but I was new at it and I didn't really know what I was doing and they turned out kind of big and anyway so the rest is history I I come out with probably 20 designs uh, a year and that's going to change I would like to have more releases right now I do the Nashville release in March and then I do another release in July but I'd like to have a couple smaller releases in between there as well, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, so thank you. I want to give kudos right now to my model stitchers. They are a lifesaver. I mean, cause I could, I couldn't do it without them. So, so much gratitude to them and they do a beautiful job. And my goal is I, I'm always looking for more people that would be interested in stitching because, um, I would like to get to a point where I have a lot of designs being worked on at, at any given moment throughout the year and then as they come in I can say okay this one would be ready for this release or this one be ready because right how I had been doing it is okay I send all these designs out you know in like July and I tell them I need them back by this date so I can get them into the Nashville market and then I wouldn't design because I'm I'm so busy with my licensing work and and all the other things I do for my business I wouldn't design anything until, oh my gosh, you know, I got, I've got the July release coming up. I need to get, you know, things out. And so I don't want to put that pressure on my stitchers. I want to just send it to them and, and have them enjoy it. And when they can get it done and back to me, that's awesome. So I'm learning. I'm learning so much. And then listening to Floss Tube, Priscilla and Chelsea and, um, Oh, Snug Harbor with, I I can't think of their names right now. I, there's so many of them, um, hands-on design. She was generous enough to offer to help me if I had any questions about Floss Tube and because she's a designer as well. So I've just been watching, binge watching, and it's just been really fun. And like I said, I've learned so much. Like Sticky Board, who knew? I, I didn't even know that existed and um, I, I was just using uh, what do you call foam core and using like double-sided tape and it was but it, it was bubbling in parts because it wasn't all being adhered to the foam core and anyway so yeah it's been it's, it's been I, I've been going to school on it let's just put it that way okay so <clears throat> I wanted to also give a shout out to Rochelle at the Cottage Needle and Cheryl from Tranquil Stitches because they are doing a stitch along. I think it started like, I want to say September 12th. It started in September and it's, it's a very intense chart, very intense chart. Uh, Jessica Smith stitched this for me and get up so you can see it better oh that's just way too yeah my light is a little bit too bright so that is the chart and I have enjoyed I'm I join camera only records a half an hour at a time 
So that's not a good sign. That means I've been talking for a half an hour. So I have to speed this up. <laughs> My goal is to like do between 30 and 40 minutes. So anyway, I joined the Facebook group that um, they are, I'm not even sure who's actually in charge of the Facebook group, but probably Cheryl, I'm not sure. Um, but it's fun to see the progress everyone's making. Um, and I wanted to show you the original painting so that you could see. So what I have been doing before this particular chart, I had been just doing, taking the line drawing from my artwork and then coloring it in the program for the cross stitch program. The one I use is called Mac stitch because I work on a Mac. But anyway, this one though, what I did is I actually took the painting and I scanned it in. So here's the painting of that. And I just thought you might be interested in seeing that if you're stitching this one. So I actually scanned this painting in. No, this wasn't the first one. It was my angels, my angel cross stitch. I wanted it to look, I want them to look painterly, especially the angels. This one could have been done way more primitive. I could have just put the line drawing in there and then just filled in the color. But I love shadowing and I love, I love this painting so much. This hangs in my studio. I love it so much that I wanted the chart to look as close to the original as possible. That's why it turned out the way it did. And let me tell you, the angels and this one, it's incredible the amount of time it takes to chart these because I don't just scan it in and go with it. It picks out funky colors. It, um, I try to eliminate colors as best as I can and still have it look good. There's, I, anyway, there's hours and hours and hours of time charting something like that. My angels are the same. Uh, and then what I do is I go, and they're, they're usually done with DMC floss just because I don't necessarily want variegated floss if I'm using, uh, if I'm using, if I'm getting shadows and, and different things, I don't want variegation anyways. So those, that's DMC floss other than Onyx for the background because I wanted one color for the background so I didn't like make people want to gouge their eyes out. And so uh, that way it would be a little variegated form. But um, let me take this out. So. People love that. People love that look. It's 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 a very difficult stitch, I will admit. I mean, I don't stitch it, but I just I see all the color changes and I think, "Oh my gosh, I wonder if this is even going to sell." I didn't know. But people love the angels so much. I'm sorry, I should have had this done before. People love the angels so much. I thought, "Well, I'm going to try it with some of these watercolor paintings and see if it goes." Well, I could not keep that in stock for a while. I mean, it was insane how many orders I was getting for it. So I thought, well, I'm going to do a few of those a year that are very complicated. This is the one that I have out now. Um, oh, gosh, it's just too doggone bright. Oh, my phone's ringing. Anyway, this one is called Good Glad Tidings of Great Joy. And it's also a very intense one because I wanted it to look like the watercolor. So that one is out right now. I And I told her this is in, in a very intense stitch chart. So whenever you get it to me, cool. I, I would love it for Nashville. Of course I would. But she didn't even get it until like a month ago. So I told her if it doesn't get back for Nashville, I'll release it in July. No big deal. So that's that. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, okay. So that's pretty much it, I think, with cross stitch. I want to talk about punch needle, which is my obsession. And uh, I wanted to just show some finishes, some different things that you can do to, you know, showcase your punch needle designs. This is just a little felted bag. It, I did not create the bag. The bag was from Dimensions, and I do not think you can get these anymore. But I, not this particular one. But I'm sure, I'm sure there's somebody that you can get these from. I, I haven't looked because I still have when I 
when I discovered these, I bought like a huge box full of different color ones. So I still have some left. But if you're looking for something like that, I'm sure you can find it online somewhere. This cute little star-shaped snowman, this piece of wood I got at Joanne Fabric. So um, he fits on there perfectly. I also have him in cross stitch. I don't know if I said anything. And then what else? I love this one. This one, I got the numbers on them, so when I go to market, I got the number on them. <laughs> this one is called Santa's Helper. And this is just a, a little wooden tray. It was already painted this awesome color. I bought it at a country store. I think it's actually made to put a candle in and then put like berries or something around it or I don't know what. So I just adhered it with fabric glue to the back. And then these are just um, scrapbooking little, what do you call, what was that game? Oh my gosh, I can't think about this. Embarrassing. What is that game? Anyway. Obviously, I don't play that game very often. Anyway, those are from scrapbooking, so you can find those at Joanne or whatever. This is Bunny Love, and this is just on, it's called a cradled board. I usually get these to actually do my paintings on, not the small, of course, bigger ones. So it's, it's nice and thick, and what I like about that is it will stand, you can't see it, but it will stand up, so you can stand it on a shelf or something. You don't have to hang it. We all love that, right? Because we don't want to put holes in our wall. So I just painted that with, what is that paint called? Carmel Colors. Country Living's Carmel Colors paint. So it's like a four-part process to get that cool texture. I'm going to save the best for last. <laughs> Halloween Greetings. That one is just on a frame in a frame. I don't like them under glass. It's just foam core, and I covered the foam core with a piece of orange wool. And then I used fabric glue and I adhered the punch needle to it. Same with this one. This is just a, a frame, five by seven frame. And I used a piece of wool. Same thing, the background. I love that wool though. It's really cute. And then this one, this is actually a plaque that you can get at Joanne Fabric. And I just painted, I love doing you know, I like to mix it up and make it a little bit different. So the edges are like burgundy and I painted this part cream and I put God bless America and then just adhered the punch needle to that. Now my absolute favorite thing to do with my punch needle is to put them on antique books. So I was trying, I was looking around my studio before I started this to see if I had any books that don't have punch needle on them and i have only one left let me show you real quick it's cool though it's a nice blue color so an americana uh, punch needle will look great on that but it's time for me to go antiquing let's just say that check out this book it's i love it i love this is actually a music book grange melodies national grange of patrons of hus husbandry uh granges of the united states i don't know but anyway isn't it cool? And what I love, like this, what I love about it, I can't really see it again, but it will, it can stand, like this one can stand up like this. Let's see if I can lift up without a problem. So it makes its own, it's its, it's, its own easel. Uh, but what I love about the ones that go in the horizontal direction, oh, and this, I forgot, this one is called Springtime Bunny Punch Needle. This one is called Top Hat Sheep. And what I like about this one is my display is like those louvered um, doors that you would put on a closet or something. And this back piece of the book slips into that louvered door. So I don't have to ha worry about trying to hang it or put something like I put Velcro on the backs of them, some of them, in order to Velcro them to my booth. So that just slides into that louvered door and just sits right there perfectly, but also it will stand its own easel. And then here's another one, Halloween Duos, an orange book. So I'm always looking for antique books, and I think you should do that too. 
it's a great way to display your punch needle. I just said earlier that I wasn't going to show uh, new things, didn't I? Well, I'm going to show you what I have done so far for Nashville. I'm not going to show cross stitch. I'm only going to show punch needle. Here's one. I don't even know the name of this one at this point. I don't have it written down. I think it was going to be Americana Emblem, I think is what I was going to call it. So that one. And you know why I like showing it this way is because you can get an idea for the size of it. Yeah, I love that. I love Americana, as you probably know if you're familiar with my patterns. Here's another one, Love One Another. I love the shape of this one. This one I will not be able to find a book for, I'm sure. Love One Another. And Love One Another has a lot of DMC floss, uh, but a, most of my punch will have a lot of Weeks Dye Works, and I use Valdani once in a while too. This one is Old St. Nick. I'm in love with this one. Oh my gosh. And I also have somebody stitching this for cross stitch. Old St. Nick. I love him. And, oh God, I don't remember the name of this one either. I don't remember the name. But anyway, cute little Halloween one. They're holding a couple of cats, and then there's a little cat sitting there. I love the moon. So that was. So those are what I have done so far for market. <laughs> Guess what? I gotta get punching. I have two of them up at the house right now that I'm working on. They're they kind of are a pair. They go together. They're really they're Christmassy. So I wanted to work on something Christmassy during Christmas because normally I work off season for everything else I do. So that's all I have for floss tube. That's pretty much it. Now I'm moving on to my art and my licensing business. Uh, I wanted to just show some things that are in your gift shops right now that I've licensed. I have these adorable figurines licensed with Blossom Bucket. Let's see if I can get it close enough for you to see without it being too bright. Isn't that cute? It's a whole set of these adorable little characters. And then there's two more. Penguin, Santa, reindeer, and snowman. I mean, how adorable. So those um, are in your stores right now. Also in the stores right now is Park Designs. What is it? What is he calling it? What are they calling it? Sa Santa and Friends or something Friends. Snow Friends. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to put a link below in the description under this video where you can go and watch the unboxing because I didn't want to go through that again. Uh, the unboxing took me forever because there's a ton of products for it, but I can put a link where you can go and see that video if you want. Also, um, whips. This is my whip right now. And I haven't painted on her in a couple weeks because we had Thanksgiving at our house and Thanksgiving um, we had like 36 people and it was absolutely insane. And we're redoing our basement. So we were working really hard on getting that done so that we could have everyone sit down there to eat because there's not enough room upstairs for that many people. So anyway, I plan on finishing her like soon. So hopefully maybe by next week when I do this video, it'll be finished. I mean, she's close to being done. It's mostly, mostly the background on her. And then the last... Uh, lesson for Colgate Studio Uncut is Fear Not. She is far, far, far from done. Far from done. This is like the first layer, except for her face, the background, the dress, everything. It's like the first layer. So I put layers and layers and layers of color on. So I'm just really getting started on her. And it's, <laughs> I actually had her face pretty well, I thought, painted good. And then I took... A, a good trick if you're an artist a good trick is to take your painting and hold it in front of you and go look in the mirror I had like first of all her head was way too big 
Like she's got these cute little hands. Her head was like out. I mean, it was way too huge. And her eyes were not level. And it was just all, it was such a mess that I didn't even think I could fix it. So I just painted black over her face. And I redrew it and I started over and she's looking way better now. She got a facelift. So that is what I have my whips for um, my business. I am starting two rather large paintings for a commission. And it, it's going to be cool. They're, there's two angels and they're, they're going to go in the same house like across from each other in her hallway. And it's cool. She lives in Michigan, but she has a beach house in Florida and she wants coastal angels. So there's going to be shells in the ocean and it's going to be all in those blues and turquoise. It's, they're going to be awesome. But they're going to be like uh, 72 inches by 36 inches. And then when she she got some um, chandeliers hung in her hallway and they came down further than she thought they were going to. So I had to order different canvases. So now they're like... I think they're 30 by 48. Yeah, they're 30 by 48, two of those. So now I have these two six foot by three foot canvases. I'm thinking, okay, I got to paint something on those that I'll hang in my house because they're too big to try to ship. You know, I, I sell a lot of art online and it's so nerve wracking sending an original out and just, I just say a prayer and I'm thinking, well, they're angels. How can they get damaged? But anyway... Um, I always say a prayer like, oh, please, God, just let them get there safe. And so far, I have never had an issue. And um, anyway, but these, I mean, seven foot by three foot, that's just, or six foot by three foot is just too big to even try to ship. So I, I don't know what I'm going to paint on them. Other than that, oh, some, I, I mentioned earlier, I'm redoing my punch needle tutorial. If you could, in the comments below, let me know. If there's things that you would like me to mention or teach you or something in, or what am I trying to say? <laughs> I mean, cause there's a lot of, there is a lot of punch needle videos out there that are free on YouTube. And I know that my course, I think it's $37 or it's $39 or something. But in that course or in that tutorial, I also give you free downloads of punch needle patterns. So Basically, it costs you nothing if you download those and use those because the, it equals out. Anyway, I want to revamp that video and do a little bit more detail work. Uh, I have a better camera now and uh, better quality video. So, uh, but I, I just want to know if there's things that that maybe aren't discussed in in other videos or on YouTube that you're dying to know or you have a question. So put a question down below if you if you do have any questions about punch needle. What else? Um, oh, and I'm, I am revamping, I am re-recording uh, the Angelic Strokes tutorial because again, that was actually filmed with a GoPro. And it's, the quality's not that good. I mean, the quality's good, but the quality I have now is way, hands down, way better. And also, it's going to be with paint that uh, it's golden paint that, that it's colors that will never ever go out, like never be discontinued because the first recording I did, I did it with craft paints and some of the colors you can't get anymore or they're difficult to find. And I don't want that for people. I don't want them to deal with that. So what I'm doing now is pretty much almost all of my videos will have the same paints and I'm teaching you how to mix the colors that you want, which is way more valuable <laughs> than just trying to go out and buy a color straight out of the bottle. So that's it. I really need to go because I'm sure it's been 40 minutes or 45 minutes and I will try to edit it down a little bit. I think that's it. That's my first floss tube, y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Please ask me any questions. Oh, I wanted to do a giveaway. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back with a giveaway. <laughs> so I am going to give away Cross Stitch 190 Seasons greetings. All you have to do is in the comments, I have a question for you that I want you to answer. And I want you to tell me what is your favorite thing to stitch? Like cats, 
snowmen, Christmas, you know, whatever. Just it, it can be one sentence, it could be one word, it can be whatever, but something that I didn't realize that I heard Priscilla and Chelsea say is that you can't say, don't say giveaway, what was the other th word? Free, I think is the other one. Don't say those words in your comment because evidently trolls can, they just seek out free stuff and I don't want to send my chart to somebody, somebody that doesn't want it, which I think it's stupid. Why would anybody get into a drawing if they don't want the prize? But anyway, so just type, uh, what is your favorite thing to stitch? And I will let you know next week who won the chart and I'll send it right out to you. So that's it. We'll see you next week. Bye.